Uh, the question is, if it's not, well, it's not very clear to part of the audience, that uh, Moses performed miracles, Jesus performed miracles, but he has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. Now, in the book of traditions, more than 300 miracles are ascribed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad But the Muslim does not make an issue of it, because those miracles of the prophets gone by are things in books. They are a matter of history. So, saying that, look, my prophet did this and your prophet did that, you see, again and again, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallam, he referred to the Qur'an, a living miracle. You see, the miracles of Moses, you know, crossing the Red Sea, right, striking the rock and rivers gushing forth, miracles of Jesus turning water into wine, killing those 2,000 pigs, drying up the fig tree from the very roots, right. Now, these are things in books. You see, you say, look, man, I don't know whether it happened or it didn't happen. It might sound like a fairy tale to most people. So he said, look, talk about this. It is a living miracle. And I'm going to prove this to you, you know, in a lecture in the series, Al-Quran, a visual miracle. In other words, that you today in the 20th century, you can verify that this book is the miracle left behind, a living miracle of Muhammad left with you. You need a little patience for that. But if you look up the books of traditions, there are more than 300 miracles attributed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallam, but the Muslim does not go out of his way to prove the bona fide of his prophets by those miracles. He said, here, a living miracle, you can see for yourself and verify yourself. But I want to ask you, you said Quran is the last testament. How can you think that a God that is alive and can see us in this very minute and have seen us since Muhammad died, Jesus died, has stopped to talk through other prophets. Thank you for your question, Ekinski. We Muslims, we claim that this is the last testament because it answers all your problems. Whether it is palatable or not, I'm not, I can't guarantee you that, that it will go down well. But it answers your problems. Now, this is what Jesus Christ had promised. You see, in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus Christ is telling his disciples, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus, God had given him guidance to guide humanity till doomsday. But the people that he was addressing, his immediate disciples, they were not fit to receive the message. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things soever shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me, Jesus. Now, we say, who is this spirit of truth? We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. And we are prepared to reason with you. I know prejudices die hard. It's natural. But let us come. Come, let us talk together. Let us reason together. The Bible says, come, let us reason together. The Quran says, pull, tell them. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O Jews and Christians, talab, come. That we come to common terms as between us and you. The terms are, say, number one, that we worship none but Allah, God Almighty. Don't worship men, don't worship monkeys, don't worship elephants and snakes. Worship the one and only God that there is. As the Bible says, God is spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit, not in form, shape or size. That is what the Quran is appealing to you. To the Jews and the Christians, come, let us get together on a common platform of worshipping the one and only God. And this book testifies that Jesus is the Christ. And in the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. 
It continues. The spirit that confesses that Jesus is the Christ is of God. This spirit, meaning the spirit is synonymous there for a prophet. The prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is of God. And this is the only faith after Jesus Christ, the only non-Christian faith which claims and speaks to the whole world that Jesus is the Christ. Who made us to say that? Muhammad. And your book says that whoever a prophet says that is so, he is from God. Why did God wait for 40 years before revealing the Quran to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Suppose the Quran was revealed to him at the age of 30. See, like Jesus Christ, he was baptized at the age of 30 in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. So he said, look, why 30? Why not at 25? And if it was 25, why not at 20? Why wasn't he born with a book in his hand? <laughs> These are questions that you have to address to Allah. You see? As I said, the Quran is a book of telegrams. You remember? The Quran is a book of telegrams from Allah through his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now you have to send a telegram to him, God Almighty. Ask him, why did you wait till the age of 40 before you delivered this message to him? It's not me, it's not in my hands. He chose Moses at the age of 40. He chose the other prophets, David at the age of 40. He chose Jesus at the age of 30. That's his business. When the time is ripe, the message is given. With regards to greatness, you see, if you read, I don't know whether you're in touch with what is going on in the world today. A certain Michael Ash Hart has written a book called The Top 100. The most influential men in history. And you see the number one, Muhammad Sallallahu In the Times Magazine, the greatest leader of all times, Jules Masserman, a Jew, a United States psychologist, is the greatest leader of all time, was Muhammad. Lamartine, in his history of the Turks, he is the greatest man that ever lived, was Muhammad. Why did God choose this man, you know, at the age of 40? And why is he recognized today? In the lifetime, every prophet, you know, you made a statement, I think that maybe you didn't know, you slipped out of your mouth, that Jesus was a great success. You know, Muhammad had to make migration. His companions had to make two migrations to Abyssinia. Jesus was a great success. That is not true. You know it's not true. You know what was his end according to the Christian what they say? The man was killed on the cross. Is that greatness? Is that success? And all his disciples forsook him and fled. They left him in the lurch. All! 100% failure. And today the Christian world are not following Jesus at all. According to that Michael at heart, he says, that you see the honor for Christianity should be divided between Jesus and Paul. And actually Paul is the real founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. So even as a religion, the religion that is carrying his name Christ Christianity is not his religion. So I think, you know, my son, uh, you should check up these things, you know, before making a statement to say, you know, this man was more successful than the other. The most successful of all religious personalities is Muhammad, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, edition, 11th edition. Most successful. Well, I don't know, nobody paid, I don't know who paid them, you know, to write that down. I just asked you, what is truth? That is what Pilate asked Jesus, which he never yeah. answered. And I answered it, and asked you. <laughs> to know the difference you, between this is the question the that Pontius Pilate asked Jesus. Sure. What is truth? Mm. And you read there, Jesus never answered that question. Oh, right. I know. Now, if you want to know what is truth, this is what the Quran says. Al-haqqu min rabbikum wa la takun min al-mumtareen. The truth comes from thy Lord alone, so be not be those of those who doubt. And uh -huh. this is the truth. This is the truth. The revelation of God. Uh -huh. It is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I this is it. Uh -huh. Whatever God says is truth. 